Many people wonder how 3D Studio Max was and still is being used in the VFX industry to create amazing effects. Well, it had one small tool that has been carrying it throughout the years. In fact, when it was used in the 2012 movie, one of the most iconic heavy VFX movies, it kept other studios scratching their heads because the results were too good and too complicated to be done by a small team in a limited time. For me personally, I consider it the secret of Max in VFX. So what is this tool, why is it important, and how it kept 3ds Max alive and a dominant player in VFX for more than two decades? Now, let me take a moment and tell you about Salad, a computer sharing community that can help you earn back some of the money you spent on your crazy high-end setup. If you have a beefy GPU, you can earn up to $180 a month in rewards by doing virtually nothing. Salad puts your PC to work, helping the world with massive computing projects like AI and machine learning. So when you are not editing, rendering, or creating art, you can start up the Salad app and start earning some rewards. It is completely safe. You can check their Trustpilot page, their open view code, or all the five-star reviews. Your computer's hard work is gonna be rewarded with games, gift cards, gaming hardware, and much more. So if you have a powerful rig, click the link in the description and get started today. Now back to the video. First of all, the tool I'm talking about is a plugin for Macs called Thinking Particles. The journey of Thinking Particles has been heavily linked to Max throughout the years. We can say it is a tool that was released in the right place at the right time, but to what extent, you might ask. To answer that, we have to travel back to the early 2000s, an era defined by many innovations in VFX, including of course, Thinking Particles. It was released in 2001 by Cebus Visual Effects Technology, a company that was established in 1989 in Heidelberg, Germany, by Edwin Braun and business partner Achim Smilers. The company was also behind many other well-known tools, such as Final Fluid and Final Render. During an interview by Alan McKay, Edwin Braun stated that 3D Studio Max crushed everyone in the market. Autodesk owns everyone of relevance. The key thing that 3ds Max delivered is the freedom for a one-man shop to do Hollywood-level production work. It frees and empowers people to do this. As for Thinking Particles itself, he discussed that their chief programmer at the time felt dissatisfied with the particle system of the software and felt like something was always missing. And what did they do, you might ask? Well, they decided to sit together and brainstorm. And the idea evolved into the fact that they wanted something fully procedural. This led to the creation of Thinking Particles a rule-based particle system that helped create impressive visual effects for movies and TV shows for many years to come. But what made it that big of a deal? Before we continue, if you are a Max user and you're looking for some third-party plugins and tools, I have good news for you. Because there are a ton of them that you haven't heard of, but can help you a lot. For example, if you are an ArcViz artist, there are a few plugins that can help you generate lights, doors, windows, and cabinets of all types and materials, whether it be glass, UVPC, wood, you name it. And if you want to sculpt characters, that is also possible with the Sculpt Tool plugin that gives you the sculpting experience inside Max. And if you need other plugins for generating hair, UV mapping, hard surface modeling, animation, and simulation, you can check the description of this video to unlock new possibilities and save yourself time and effort. Now back to the video. Thinking Particles saw a lot of success in the industry, and it was used for a lot of productions, which we'll discover in a minute. But first, what made it stand out in what is already a competitive field? Was it its rule-based approach to particle simulation or something else? Let me explain. So to not bore you down with the complex technical details, the main idea behind it is that it uses a set of nodes that you can combine with each other to design an ultimate range of particle behaviors and interactions. We can do that by combining a series of nodes and operators. 
which are consequently used to define a set of rules and interactions that the particles have to follow. For example, we have birth operators that can control elements such as the birth rate of the particles, or to select which group newborn particles will belong to. But this is just a small example, and it can get much more complex than that. Then, based on these predefined rules and conditions, it follows the particles to decide what to do, and act accordingly. In a sense, it is how the term thinking particles came out to be, as they are particles that think, well, at least in a metaphorical sense. With features like this, I think we can all agree that thinking particles had a bright future, but if we look at it from today's lenses, it may not seem as groundbreaking as it was, because the industry back then was way different. To understand this, let's go back to that Alan McKay interview. When Edwin Brown said, when we were working on 2012, I was at Imageworks in LA. I was there for months. They had a small team of 10 to 16 people, working with thinking particles, and they crushed the big names. Roland Emmerich, the director, was happy with the thinking particles work that came from that small team. He followed by saying, 3D Studio Max and a collection of tools that you decide as an artist you want to use empowered them so that they could work on 2012. With skyscrapers coming down, it got to the point that one of the big name studios asked, how do you do that? Were they using a thousand artists? They did not understand how this little team was outdoing them on the hero shots. I think the answer is, we can implement stuff in 3D Studio Max like in no other application. It gives the power to the artist to choose what he wants. Based on a statement like that, it is needless to say that throughout the years, Thinking Particles was quickly spread out across the industry. And without it, I don't think 3DS Max could have been as much of a major player in Hollywood. I know, this can be debatable, because we could never know for sure. Particles are a big part of producing visual effects, such as smoke, liquids, and destruction effects. While Max has its own integrated particle system, which is called Particle Flow, I don't think it was interesting to big studios. Because while it is easy to set up, and it can do most of the everyday tasks, but when it comes to heavier stuff, I don't think we can deny that it is lacking. Actually, severely lacking. Because it wasn't updated by Autodesk for a long time. Until Tyson Ibell came to the scene and showed Autodesk how to do it. By the way, we have a full video about Typhlow, which replaced Particle Flow, and it is really cool, and the story behind it is even better. For example, effects that require a high number of particles, or for breaking something into fragments or pieces, at least high quality ones, Particle Flow is not recommended. While with the rule-based approach of thinking particles, I believe the question changes from what you can do with it to what you can't. Because in theory, this plugin which is Thinking Particles offers an endless level of possibilities. And even though it would be slower to process and render, as well as being a much more challenging system to learn, I guess a much more complicated tool is better than the one that doesn't give you the result that you want. So as we discussed, thanks to the features of Thinking Particles that it brought to the table, 3D Studio Max kept its position as a main 3D software in VFX and became a tool that was used by a large number of leading VFX studios, including Scaleline VFX, FuseFX, and Battleship FX, in addition to many others. And it was used in a big number of productions, such as Ant-Man 2, Stranger Things, Terminator, Blade, and endless other examples. But how did they use it exactly? As an example of that, let's take a look at Godzilla, where Keiyo Niyoka, the CEO of Stealthworks, mentioned in an interview he gave to Seba's website, in this project, Thinking Particles was and is really essential. Both Stealthworks and Shirogomi FX are primarily on the 3DS Max pipeline. Some artists use Houdini as well. So, Thinking Particles' Alembic export feature became really useful because thousands of fragments can be saved with only one group and one mesh. It was really easy to bridge between the two, I mean Max and Maya. So without Thinking Particles, I think we wouldn't have made it in time. 
and within budget. For example, when I finish the primary concrete solution of the buildings, other artists could store secondary effects like debris, glass, steel, and cloth based on the primary simulation cache at the same time. But of course, this is just one among many other examples that show what this fascinating tool can do, which I think gives a good insight to how professionals use it in the industry. The question now is, where did it go from there? And is it still important and relevant? You know what? This question is a bit tricky to answer. In terms of Max, I believe it is still one of the best tools for this kind of work. For example, originally it was primarily made for particle-based destruction and fluid simulations, but later on, they added other features, such as a solver for liquids and soft bodies, or the addition of OpenVDB format, a popular format in the industry, which makes it simpler to transfer files between software. And with the most recent release of Thinking Particles 7.3, we got introduced to a lot of bug fixes to the plugin and new features, such as the ability to calculate the distance between two points within a distance field. However, when it comes to the industry itself, I think the topic is a bit different because after the second part of the 2000s, Houdini started to build a reputation for itself as the go-to VFX software because generally speaking, it is a much more advanced software with better solvers and one that covers bigger types of effects. So as the way things look right now, I think in my opinion, this is the direction the industry is heading with thinking particles becoming more of a background tool, but only the future will give us answers. And either way, this plugin and this important VFX tool will forever be one of the best tools that ever existed. And hopefully it will keep going because a lot of artists depend on it. So guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to share, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.